जन शलाकय चक्षुरन्मिल तस्म श्री गुरव नम श्री चैतन्य मनोभीष्ट स्थापित ये नूतले स्वयं रूप कदाम ददाति स्वदातिक वंदेहम श्री गुरु श्रीयुत पदकमल श्री गुरु वैष्णवांश श्री रूप सागर जात सह गन रघुनाथा तम सजीव साइत सवदूत परिजन सहित कृष्ण चैतन्य श्री राधा कृष्ण पादा सह गन ललिता श्री विशाखाता नम ओं विष्णुपाधा कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदात स्वामी नामिने नमस्ते सारस्वते देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चात देश तारिणे हे कृष्णा करुणा सिंधु दीन बंधु जगतपते गोपेश गोपिका कांत राधा कांत नमस्तुते तप्त कांचन गौरांगे राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी ऋषभानु सुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिये पांचा कल्पतरुभ्य कृपा सिंधुब एव पतिता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गधाधर श्रीवासादी गौरभक्त वृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा so welcome all the devotees back and i'm happy to see all the bhakti shastri students also back so for this uh, discussion on shri upanishads and uh, we discuss together uh, upadesh amrit nectar of instructions and then nectar of devotions and now by giriraj mercy we are going to discuss shri upanishads shri ish upanishads which is like the Three books out of the four Bhakti Shastri. So unfortunate also. So before we begin, uh, I would like to first uh, draw the devotees uh, to the norms of this seminar, and this is for everyone. And uh, we'll try to follow these norms. So I'll just uh, discuss the norms. Firstly, kindly you know keep your mobiles in silent mode. Best is to sit on your desktop and. Uh, you know stay in one place attentively participate in the discussion it's going to be interactive there will be question and answers from both sides so best is you know don't move with your mobiles back and forth that causes disturbance uh, so that's one request from our side class is interactive as i mentioned i will be asking questions you can ask me questions also Uh, i will be discussing uh, certain points or certain concepts in the slides and then pause for questions if you happen to have a question while the discussion is going on i might take it up or might not take it up and it might get answered in the discussion also so i would like to finish the first flow of thought and then take up the question answers so kindly hold on you know if uh, i don't take up the question immediately so that's the uh, rule and kindly is raise your hand button you know to ask questions don't type the questions on the chat box at all don't type any messages dandot pranam to all devotees you know hari krishna to all please don't do that typing just focus on hearing shravan and uh, use the chat box only if the audio is not clear otherwise don't use it ask questions raise your raise your hand ask questions i would like to hear the questions 
no type questions will be entertained. And whatever questions you have, it should be related to the subject, precisely the point what we are discussing. If I am discussing about, say, you know, Prasthanatraya, I discuss the discussion on Prasthanatraya, so your question should be on Prasthanatraya and not some other things. So you have to ask questions based on the subject which is being discussed and no questions out of context will be entertained. So Ishu Panishads is a part of the Bhakti Shastri and in our Bhakti Shastri we have these four books, Bhagavad Gita, Ishu Panishad, Necro of Instruction, Necro of Devotion. And uh, actually if you see uh, chronologically, progressively, the first book we should study is Sri Ishupanishads. <laughs> that is the first book we should study. And then the Bhagavad Gita, and then the Necro of Instruction, and then last the Necro of Devotion. So we will come to that. <laughs> now this is, uh, you know, uh, a theme which I'm going to discuss today. Uh, the four books of the, for the Bhakti Shastri. Okay, and after this theme discussion is over, uh, then only I will take up questions. Okay. The four books of the Bhakti Shastri are Sri Ishopanishads, Bhagavad Gita, The Nectar of Instruction, Upadesh Amrit, and Nectar of Devotion, Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. Sri Ishopanishads and Bhagavad Gita are the most important books amongst the four books we study as foundation for understanding the basic philosophy of Krishna consciousness. So, the philosophical books, if you see, are Ishupanishads and Bhagavad Gita, and more you can say Bhagavad Gita. <clears throat> In fact, most of our preaching, what we do, uh, <clears throat> is through the Bhagavad Gita, and we hardly use the Ishupanishads, but you know, the principles of Ishupanishads are dealt in the Bhagavad Gita because Bhagavad Gita is Gita Upanishads, it is the essence of all Upanishads. So, our philosophy, in one sense, you know, when we preach uh, philosophy to the newcomers, it is basically from the Bhagavad Gita. But for our own practices uh, of devotion, we refer more to the devotional guides like Upadesha Amrita and Nectar of Devotion. The two books, Nectar of Instruction, Upadesha Amrita and Nectar of Devotion, Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, are composed by Rupa Goswami. So, in one sense, Ishupanishads uh, is a Vedic text especially it is belonging to the part of the four Vedas, Upanishads. The Bhagavad Gita is also a Vedic text, again belonging to the Spriti category. This is more from the Shruti category. But these two books, Nectar of Instruction and Nectar of Devotion, belong to the Gaudiya Vaishnav canon. They belong to the Gaudiya Vaishnav canon in one sense. Exclusively, these are Gaudiya Vaishnav books. You know, in the other sampradayas, they study Ishupanishad, Bhagavad Gita, written Acharya, they are Acharya's commentary, but they don't study Nectar of Instruction and Nectar of Devotion. These are especially given by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu through the six Goswamis and through Prabhupada to us. There is a systematic progression in the four books and that we study and let's see that. Let's see what is that systematic progression. <coughs> Anyone knows what is the systematic progression in the four books? What systematic progression is there in these four books? Any thoughts anyone has about it? I know it's a difficult question, but I would like to hear if anyone has any thoughts about what is the systematic progression in the four books. Uh, Sri Valli Mataji, yes. Uh, One second, let me. Yes, Mataji. One second. Yes. Hare Krishna, Prabhu. First class, when you started, I remember you saying that Ishopanishad establishes the supremacy of uh, Krishna. Mm -hmm. And then we come to what uh, he said which is B, Bhagavad Gita and then to follow that what instructions are there for 
normal people like us to progress through we study NOI and then NOD. Okay. Yeah, we quite remember, quite close. But again, let us go and see. According to learned scholars, there are three different sources of knowledge which are called prasthanathaya. There are three ways of knowing or three pillars of knowledge, prasthanathaya. Shri Yushupanishad is part of the four Vedas, Shruti, Shruti Prasthan. Bhagavad Gita is part of is part of Mahabharata and is known as Priti Prasthan. The Vedanta Sutra is known as Nyaya Prasthan. We study the natural commentary, Srimad Bhagavatam. So, Prasthanatraya in Vedanta. We will come to this a little later, but let us now only understand that Ishupanishads you know, belongs to the category of Shruti Prasthan. Bhagavad Gita belongs to the category of Smriti Prasthan. And Vedanta Sutra or the natural commentary on the Vedanta Sutra, which is what Mahaprabhu recommended us, is belonging to the Nyaya Prasthan. So, <laughs> Any theological school which is bona fide, any Acharya, if he has to establish his school, he has to comment on Shruti Prasthan, Smriti Prasthan and Naya Prasthan. So, Srila Prabhupada, uh, in the Shruti Prasthan category, he commented on Sri Ishupanishads. In the Smriti Prasthan category, he commented on the Bhagavad Gita. And in the Nyay Prasthan, he commented on the Srimad Bhagavatam. That's how this one is a bona fide theological school. <laughs> Because this, we have the prasanatraya. In fact, all the acharyas, we will see that later, that they established their school of thought, whether it is Madhva, Shri, uh, Vishnu Swami, or Nimbarka, by commenting on all the three categories, Priti Shruti, Priti, and Nyaya Prasas. So within the you know uh, Bhakti Shastri, we study Ishupanishad from the Shruti Prasan category. We study the Bhagavad Gita from the Spriti Vastan category. Bhagavad Gita, of course, it is Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya. It's every day we should study it. So, Bhakti Shastri, four books are enough, Prabhupada said. For Bhakti Shastri, Bhagavad Gita, Ishupanishads, NOD, NOI. For life, it is Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, Chaitanya Charitamrita, and NOD. So, these are the way you can understand this. Now, we have established this that you know Ishupanishad is Sruti Prasthan and Bhagavad Gita is Sruti Prasthan. But what about you know nectar of instruction and nectar of devotion? That will come to it now. Now, the Bhagavad Gita is a Vedic literature. <clears throat> it's a Vedic literature. All over the world, everyone knows about the Bhagavad Gita, and that's why you see there are so many scholars, so-called swamis, gurus, management, personalities who have, you know, written so-called commentaries on the Gita. The Bhagavad Gita is known worldwide because it is a Vedic text. Whereas the Srimad Bhagavatam is a Vaishnav literature. Those who are devotees of Vishnu, only they read it exclusively. That's first thing. Secondly, only Vaishnav Acharyas have written commentary on Bhagavatam. There are no other commentaries, uh, you know, which are written on the Bhagavatam by, you know, those who are not Vaishnavas. Because it is a Vaishnav Shastra. The Srimad Bhagavatam is a Vaishnav literature. Whereas the Chaitanya Charita Amrita and the NOD, the Nectar of Devotion, are Gaudiya Vaishnav literatures. It's only Gaudiya Vaishnavas uh, who refer to Chaitanya Charita Amrita and Nectar of Devotion. <coughs> You know, the Shri Sampradaya or the Madhya Sampradaya, they don't study Chaitanya Charitamrit. <laughs> so, uh, that's the progression we can see. The Bhagavad Gita is a Vedic literature. It has a vast audience, vast spectrum. The Srimad Bhagavatam is a Vaishnava literature. And the CC and NOD are Gaudiya Vaishnava literature. So, this is the hierarchy of progression in Srila Prabhupada book. So, Srila Prabhupada gave us the Vedic literature, Bhagavad Gita. The Vaishnava literature of Bhagavatam and specifically Gaudiya Vaishnava literature in the form of CC and NOD. 
Now, in fact, CC and NOD, you know, are actually the topmost books in the Gaudiya Vaishnava canon. Chaitanya Charitamrita, we see that's why it is like a PhD. You know? Nectar of Devotion is also like a PhD, <laughs> in fact. Okay, now let's come to more deeper into the progression. Sri Ishupanishads deals with self-realization, Brahma Gyan. It's Brahma Gyan. Sri Ishupanishad Mantra 15 points out that the Atma, individual conscious being, is a part of the Supreme, the, the Absolute Truth, the Supreme Conscious Being. The devotee prays to please show his face. So there, in you know, Mantra 15, when we study, we come to know that the devotee is praying, Oh my Lord, please show me your face. So this is the verse. Hiranyamaya patre na satyasya pihitam mukam tatvam poshan apavranu satya dharma yadrishyate Oh my Lord, satyasya, sustainer of all that lives. Pushan. Pushan means one who sustains. Your real face, Mukam, is covered apahitam by, the, by your dazzling effulgence. Hiranyamaya patrena. Kindly remove apagranu that covering tat and exhibit yourself to your pure divinity. Satya dharmaya drishyate. So kindly give me your darshan. Your Brahma Jyoti is covering your uh, personal form. So calmly remove this, you know, this Hiranamaya Patra the dazzling effulgence. So in the Ishupanishads, ultimately, the absolute truth is a person has been established. Sri Ishupanishads points out that ultimately the absolute truth is a person. That is established in the Ishupanishads. But who is that person? That is not spoken in the Ishupanishads. Who is that absolute truth? It defines the absolute truth. Who is that? What is his name? And Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna himself makes it very clear. Bhagavad Gita further points out that the absolute truth, the supreme personality of God is Sri Krishna. So that absolute truth who is a person, Krishna himself in the Bhagavad Gita points out that I am that absolute truth. Matta paratram nanyat aham sarvasya prabho or Arjuna saying param brahma param dhamam pavitram paramam bhavan. So you can now see the progression that the Ishupanishads establishes the absolute truth of the person and in the Bhagavad Gita it establishes who is that personality, what is his name, it is Krishna. Not only that, further, having established that Lord Krishna is God in Bhagavad Gita by Lord Sri Krishna himself, how to attain him is also established. So the Sambandh in one sense is established in Ishupanishads and even in Bhagavad Gita. But the Abhidheya, how to attain the Lord, what is the means by which we can attain the Lord? That is through Bhakti. Only by the process of bhakti, one can know him and understand him in truth. So, how we can understand Krishna or how we can attain the Krishna? What is the means to attain Krishna? By the process of bhakti, not by the process of karma or jnana. So, bhakti is the topmost process Krishna establishes in the Gita. So, <clears throat> this is how uh, in the Bhagavad Gita, the Abhidhe is pointed out there. So, this is the references, you know, 11.54. Uh, Bhaktiya to Ananya Shakya and uh, Brahma Bhuta, Bhaktiya Mama Vijanati, and verses 4.3 also. That only by devotion you can understand the Arjuna. So, by the process of Bhakti, one can understand the Absolute Truth. So, that is how Bhagavad Gita establishes. How to perform bhakti is also clearly delineated by Lord Sri Krishna and the Bhagavad Gita. So how to perform bhakti? The process is how can you understand the Lord is bhakti, but how to perform? Manmana bhava mad bhakto. So Krishna gives in a general sense how one should perform bhakti. One should offer respectful obeisances to him. One should remember him. There are many other verses which I have quoted here. All these verses establish how to perform bhakti. Now, the interesting thing is 
So the goal is to attain the Lord. In Vedic terminology, it is called Sadhya. Sadhya means the goal. The goal is to attain the Lord. Prabhu kahe pade shlok sadhya ra nirnai. This is what Mahaprabhu asked uh, Ramanandra. Tell me the goal of life. You know, from there it begins. So the goal of life is to attain the Lord. And the process to attain the goal is called is bhakti, sadhana. That has been established by Bhagavad Gita. So there is sadhana and sadhya. So these two terminologies, we should be very, very clear. What is sadhana and what is sadhya? Now I'm quoting a verse from the uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita. Sadhya sadhana amina jani bala mate. Sadhya sadhana shreshta jaha amate. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, I do not know amina jani very well bala mate. The aim of life and how to achieve it. Sadhya means the aim of life. And the means, that is the goal, is sadhya. And the means is sadhana. <laughs> so I don't know. Please tell jahana, jahana me amate of the best ideal for humanity and how to attain it. Sadhya sadhana shrish. What is the best sadhya to attain? And the best sadhana among all. So these two terms, we should be very, very familiar with what is sadhya and what is sadhana. So this is called as means and ends. Now I give this example that the child, when he starts going to school, uh, he initially, you know, is crying, he's you know, feeling, you know, it's austerity to go to the school, carry the bag. He likes to play, but the parents, you know, uh, if they beat him, then, you know, the child will cry more and he'll revolt more. So they'll give him a chocolate. And, you know, if you go to the school, you'll get chocolate. So the child, you know, because of the greed for chocolate, he goes to the school. And <clears throat> for him, <clears throat> the ends is, you know, ultimately I'll get chocolate. <laughs> Because he doesn't know that by education, you know, ultimately he will become learned and then he'll be able to get a job and maintain his life. But uh, as a child grows and starts taking part in education and he starts relishing his studies, then no more, you know, the parents need to give him the chocolate. He is now naturally inspired. So the means and ends are like that. So sometimes, you know, uh, uh, we might uh, give some uh, some things which are very, very favorable for the means, keeping in the goal, the end. So, so that's why the Karma Kanda Shastras are like that. <laughs> they, you know, they give the goal of Swarga and heavenly enjoyment and happiness. So that ultimately they take up to the path of Vedas and ultimately when they get to self-realization, they say this is inferior. Let me attain the Lord. So the highest sadhya and the highest sadhana. The highest sadhya is to attain love for God and the highest sadhana is the process of bhakti. So this is what Mahaprabhu is asking. So this is regarding sadhya and sadhana. This is in our discussion with respect to the four books, Ishopanishads. Bhagavad Gita, Nectar of Devotion and Nectar of Instruction. Now, through the Sri Ishupanishads and Bhagavad Gita, the Sadhya is established. Ultimately, Ishupanishads points out that, you know, the ultimate, you know, the absolute truth is a person and the Bhagavad Gita points out that that person is Krishna. So, the Sammand is established. Sadhya is established. The goal is to attain Krishna. Through the two books, the Nectar of Instruction, of Desha Amrit and Nectar of Devotion, Bhakti Rasamrit Sindhu, the sadhana is explained to attain the sadhya. Please remember. So, uh, Nectar of Devotion, how to perform bhakti? What are the angas of bhakti which have to be performed? Especially Nectar of Devotion will define, you know, bhakti and the different limbs of bhakti. Sadhana, there are the 64 limbs of bhakti. So, sadhana bhakti by which we attain sadhya bhakti. So this is how progressively 
Uh, these four books are Rishupanishad, Bhagavad Gita, Metro of Instruction, Metro of Evolution. They deal with Sadhya and Sadhana and that's why there is a progression we can see in these four books. With connection to Sadhya and Sadhana, there are three important concepts we need to learn from the Vedas. So, there are three important concepts called as Sambandha, Abhidheya and Prayojan. What do you call it as SAP? So, in the Chaitan Charitamrita, it said, Bhagavan Sambandha, Bhakti Abhidheya, Hoya, Prema Prayojana, Veda Tina Vastu Kahayo. The Supreme Personality of Godhead is the central point of all relationships. So, we have to establish our Sambandha with Bhagavan. And how to attain the Lord? Bhakti, Bhakti Abhidheya. Abhidheya means the means. And what is the goal? Prem. Not Dharma, Artha, Kama or Moksha, but to attain love for God. Prema Prayojana. Attainment of love of God is the ultimate goal. It is the ultimate Sadhya. And the three subject matters are described in the Vedic literature. So when we study the Bhagavad Gita, when we study any Vedic literature, we should remember this. Bhagavan Sambandha, Bhakti Abhidaya, Prema Prayojan. So in relation to this uh, Sambandha, Abhidaya, Prayojan, I give the standard example of a BMW car. So when uh, you know somebody has love for cars and he just sees a brand new BMW car racing by him, immediately his heart is attracted to the BMW car. He is, you know, in his heart, there is now Prema for raw. BMW cryer. He has attained, he has, wants to reach that prayojan. In one sense, he has reached that prayojan. I want the BMW car. And he has established now relationship with the BMW car. I want it. Oh, how would it be sitting in the BMW car? So, must we reach prayojan and then we come to Sambandha now. Now, Yes, I want a BMW car. I have a company where I'm making profits every year, 20 lakhs. And BMW car costs me 80 lakhs. So next two, three years, I should increase my profits more, save some more few lakhs, take a loan, and then buy the BMW car. Now, having established someone in the heart with the BMW car, the next two, three years, you know, he works very hard to attain that BMW car. That is like the means or like that is like the sadhana. And after two years, he goes to the BMW car showroom, buys the car, you know, and then he's driving the car. He has attained prima. He's attained his goal. That is a BMW car. But then, you know, when he's driving, he sees the Jaguar coming in and he becomes envious of the owner of Jaguar and he wants to attain that. So like that, our... You know, uh, our ultimate goals in this material world keep on changing because the objects are material. But our real object, someone we should establish with Bhagwan because Bhagwan is eternal. And this uh, is a universal principle of someone that we present. You know, a boy sees a beautiful girl and he becomes attracted. He wants to have him as his wife. So that someone is established in the heart and then he goes to the means, you know, trying to contact his friends, her friends, trying to meet her, you know, propose her, <laughs> all this happens. That is the process. And ultimately, uh, when he marries her, then he feels he has attained the goal, prayojan. <laughs> but again, all these rasas, be it with uh, objects in this world, which are mundane rasa, or <clears throat> the living beings, that is the relationship between man or woman or two friends or whatever it is. All these are mental rasas or mundane rasas. But the, the soul is spiritual and the Lord is the supreme soul. Only by establishing relationship with him through the process of bhakti and attaining love for him, then the soul can experience complete satisfaction. So, Sambandha Vidaya Prayojan. In this context, these you know, three terms have to be very, very clearly understood. Now, let us see the progression of the focus. So, Bhagavan Sambandha is established in Sri Shukhanishas and Bhagavad Gita. Of course, Bhagavad Gita also speaks about Abhidheya and Prayojan also in one sense. But it is not 
elaborately discussed. Abhideya, Upadesha Amrit and for your kind information, Bhakti Rasamrit Sindhu, both are Abhideya Shastras and Rupa Goswami is our Abhideya Acharya. But still I have, you know, classed uh, Bhakti Rasamrit Sindhu in the Prayojan category because it speaks about Prema Bhakti, you know, an entire chapter is devoted to Prema Bhakti. And then uh, the highest rasa is Madhuri rasa is also pointed out. But technically speaking, Bhakti Rasamra Sindhu falls in the Abhideya category. It is the Abhideya Shastra given by our Abhideya Acharya, Rupa Goswami. And that is why Srila Prabhupada uh, gave these four books, Vishwapanishad, Bhagavad Gita, Udesha Amrit and Bhakti Rasamra Sindhu. Our Prayojan Acharya is uh, Raghunath Das Goswami and he has given us Prayojan Shastras for how to ultimately attain the Prayojan. But all texts in one sense, all texts, be it Vishupanishads, Bhagavad Gita, Upadesh Amrit, they will be touching upon certain aspects of Sambandha, but uh, more on Abhidheya as Ruth Goswami's books and on Prayojan. But Raghunath Das Goswami's text also will touch on Sambandha Abhidheya, but more on Prayojan because he's our Prayojan Acharya. So the four books in progression uh, we saw that there is a systematic progression from sadhya to sadhana. Sadhya is established in Ishapanishad Bhagavad Gita and sadhana through Uddesh and Bhakti Rasamrata Sindhu. So in this context, we uh, discuss uh, what is sadhya and sadhana and what is sambandha, vidheya and prayojan. Okay, so this is very important and... Uh, I took this because we are studying Ishupanishad now and this is the first book to be studied in, in one sense. So, any questions you have regarding up till now what we have discussed about the four books, the progression, one, about the definition of what is Sadhya and Sadhana and Sambandha Bidaya Prayojan. Any questions, any clarification anyone has? Up till now. Everyone is clear for the progression of the four books. Okay. So then now we go to Sri Ishupanishads. Sri Ishupanishads, the knowledge that brings one nearer to the Supreme Personality of God and Krishna. We will go into the meaning of this Sri Ishupanishads. There is one hand raised. Okay. Yes, Prabhuji. Uh, Hare Krishna, Prabhu Dhanurthana. Uh, Prabhu just wanted to know what is the difference between Shruti and Smriti Sastra? What is the difference between Shruti Sastra and Smriti? We will come to that now. We are going to come to that now. Right. Any other clarification anyone wants? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, this is the introduction to the Vedas, the three prasthanas. <clears throat> the head of the Vedas is the Upanishads. They are the final conclusion of the Vedas and thus are called Vedanta. They come in the end also and they give the conclusion of the Vedas. That's why they are called as Vedanta, the conclusion of the Vedas. In the words of the followers of Vedanta, they are called Shruti Prasthan, Shruti text, without author and eternal. Please mark this. Shruti texts are without author and they are eternal. Every time the creation happens, you know, uh, these, uh, these uh, Shruti mantras, uh, they are the same. They don't change. They don't change. They are without other. It's directly the breathing of the Lord. You know, these, these Vedas come out from the breathing of the Lord. Vyas, in order to harmonize the statements of the Upanishads, wrote the Vedan Sutra. So the Vedanta Sutra, you know, in the Upanishads, you know, this Brahman, you know, is defined or some uh, Upanishad mantras mention about Brahman. 
So what does uh, Vyas Dev say does in the Vedan Sutta? Oh, that Brahman actually refers to this. You know, this Brahman which is mentioned in this Upanishad refers to this. So he harmonizes all the statements of the Upanishads in the form of Vedan Sutra, and that is called as Nyaya Prasthan. Now, Nyaya Prasthan means working work involving logic to find the meaning of the Upanishads. It's not the you know, there is the Nyaya Darshan. Nyaya, nyaya Darshan is different and Nyaya Prasthan is different. That is, you know, the understanding with logic, the meaning of the Upanishads, you know, through the Vedan Sutra. It harmonizes the statements of the Vedan Sutra. The Mahabharata and the Puranas, which are also, which he also wrote, are called Spriti Prasthan. Spriti text, authored, but following the Vedas. So the Shruti texts are without author, they are eternal, and the Smriti texts are composed, they are authored, but based on the Smritis. The same knowledge of the Shruti is given in the Smritis, in the form of stories and all. So you know the Shrutis are like injunctions. The Smritis are like the same injunctions are mentioned in the form of stories. So there is a Shruti Prasthan. There is the Nyaya Spriti Prasan and the Nyaya Prasan. Now, we know that there are these Shad Darshan, the six Darshans. The Nyaya propounded by Gautama, Vaisheshika propounded by Kanada, Sankhya propounded by Kapila, Yoga propounded by Patanjali. And there is the Karma Mimamsa or the Purva Mimamsa propounded by Jamini and the Uttar Mimamsa or the Vedanta propounded by Vyas. Now, we are not going into these Shad Darshans. And uh, this is not the forum to discuss about what are the shared darshans and what each of the darshans are. But I am explaining this for a certain reason, and that is in the next slide. So there is this shared darshan, this Vedic thought. And within this Vedic thought, there is astika, those who have faith in the Vedas, which the shared darshan are there. And there is a nastik, who have no faith in Vedas. So there is Buddhism, Jainism, and Charvakism. But within the Astika, there is the Nyaya, Vaishika, Sankhya, Yoga, Mimamsa, and Vedanta. The Vedanta Darshan propounded by Vyasdev actually truly presents the conclusion of the Vedas, that the absolute truth is a person and he is Krishna. Whereas these other Darshans don't point out absolutely the cause of all causes as Krishna. The Nyaya, uh, Vaisheshika propounds that atom is the cause of all causes of this universe. Nyaya, you know, logic is superior. Sankhya, ultimately, there is no Purusha. <laughs> you know, this Prakriti has come on its own. Yoga goes to an impersonal aspect. Imams, uh, Mimamsa, the Karma Mimamsa, you know, Karma is supreme. You know, God has to give you the fruits. He is also, you know, bound like that. So the Vedanta Darshan, uh, uh, gives the uh, conclusion or the true conclusion of the Vedas and within the Vedanta there is one extreme, the Advaita the other extreme that is Dvaita and in between is the Achinta Veda Ved propounded by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Of course there is Shuddha Dvaita and Dvaita with Shuddha uh, Vishishta Dvaita also of Ramacharya. But why I am discussing this is because this Prasthana Traya are in Vedanta Remember that. So within the Vedanta, there is the Prasthana Traya. Shruti Prasthan, the four Vedas, Rig, Yajur, Sam, Atharva, Spriti Prasthan, Itihasas, Puranas, and the Pancharatra. Sorry, it is Pancharatra. Nyay Prasthan, that is the Vedanta Sutra. So this Prasthana Traya is within the Vedas, within the, sorry, within the Vedanta. Now, further, Upanishads are the crown jewel of the Vedas. What is Veda? Veda comes from the word, verbal root with meaning to know or to be aware. Vedati dharma brahma chaya vedaha. The scripture that teaches about dharma and brahman is called Veda. They are sound incarnations of the Lord. The Vedas are usually in verse with meter and each verse is called mantra. So all the Shruti 
uh, texts are called as mantras. Please remember. And that's why Vishupanishads, you see mantra 1, mantra 2. It's not verse 1, verse 2. Shlokas are composed. They are Smriti texts. Like Upadeshamra, there is verse 1, verse 2. But all the Shruti texts are mantras. A collection of mantras is called Sukta. Sukta means Su Upta. Su means very nice. Upta means you have spoken. So they are, you know, uh, prayers of glorification, propitiating devatas. Ultimately, they are indicating to the absolute truth. <laughs> a collection of suktas is called a samitha. A collection of suktas is called a samitha. Anyone knows about any samitha? Any samitha you have come across? Oman Sahadev. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Have I new today? Hare Krishna. Yes, Prabhuji. Brahma Samita. Brahma Samita. Now my question to you further is. Brahma Samhita comes in which category? Shruti Prasthan, Smriti Prasthan or Nyaya Prasthan? Let us see who will answer this. Yes, Komal Mataji, you only can answer after hearing this. Yeah. I think uh, Shruti Mahesh Prabhu has Mahesh Prabhu had raised his hand. One second, let me unmute you. Yes, Prabhuji. Uh, Prabhuji, probably uh, it is Smriti Prasthan because it was composed by Brahma. Yes, exactly. Brahma Samhita is a Smriti Prasan because it is composed. It is not eternal. Brahmaji, when he had darshan of Golok and he had the darshan of Krishna, in glorification, go in the Mahadi Purusham, Tamaham, Vajami. So that's it. Yes. Guruvinda also has typed it right because it is composed by Brahma. Yeah. But Sukti, Su Ukti. I hope it's good. The Brahmanas, now this is not referring to Brahmana, Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishnava, Vaishudra. The Brahmanas are another part of the Vedas, deal with mantras for sacrifices and rules for sacrifice. They are usually written in prose. The Aranyakas are another part of the Vedas. Similar to the Brahmanas, Upanishads are the fourth part of the Vedas. So within this Vedas, each of the Vedas, Rig, Yajur, Samatara, there are these four divisions. Samhita, Brahmana portion, Aranyaka portion and the Upanishads. Now there is a, you know, there is a categorization of this based on the spiritual order. So when a Brahmachari goes to the Gurukul and studies the Vedangas, he first studies the Samhita portion of the Vedas. When he enters the Grahastha Ashram, he has to perform a lot of sacrifices because he has a lot of many material desires. So then he studies the Brahmana portion of the Vedas. And then when he retires, Aranyaka, Aranyaka means you know, when he goes to the Vana. So he has to perform austerity, Sapasya. Then he refers to the Aranyaka portion of the Vedas. And when he uh, takes Sanyas and he studies the Upanishads, so, when one goes to the Gurukul, he studies the Samhita portion of the Vedas. When one <clears throat> is in the city, the Grahasthas are always in the city. So, they study the Brahmana portion of the Vedas. When you go out of the forest, you study the Aranyak portion of the Vedas. And when you want to get out of the world, then you need the Upanishads. Because the Upanishads speak about another world, going out of the world, liberation. Ultimately, the highest liberation is Krishna Prem. So that's how these four different, uh, you know, uh, divisions are there within the Vedas. 
within the Vedas. Now I'm just giving you a sample of it. So you can see in the Rig Veda, there is the Rig Veda Samhita. And then there is the Aitriya Brahmana. Then there is the Aitriya Aranyaka. And then there is the Aitriya Upanishads. The Aitriya Upanishads, uh, I think, was a very famous uh, and favorite of Madhvacharya. Yes. In the Yajur Veda, there is the Shukla Yajur Veda and the Krishna Yajur Veda. There is a Taitriya Samhita, there is a Taitriya Brahmana, there is a Taitriya Aranika, and there are Taitriya Upanishads. And then in the Shukla, there is the Vajasniya Samhita. And within the Vajasniya Samhita, the last portion is the Ish Upanishads, which we are going to study. There is the Brahad Aranika Upanishads. Now you can see from this title, it is Brahad, it is Aranika and Upanishads. It's both a combination of Aranika and Upanishads. So this is not a watertight classification <laughs> because, you know, there is sometimes, uh, you know, uh, a combination of both. So the Brahad Aranika Upanishads is a combination of both. Similarly, there is a sample of the Samveda, the Samveda Samhita, then there is a Brahmana, there is a Chandra Upanishad, there is a Kain Upanishads. So like that, there are these four different divisions, Samhita, Brahmana, you know, Aranika and Upanishads. Now, again coming back here, just to give an example, you know, in the Yagyas, uh, we first uh, glorify the devatas in order to propitiate them. So that time we refer to the samitas, uktis, through uktis. And once the devatas come for the yajna, then we refer to the brahmana portion of the vedas where the mantras for sacrifice are there. And then <clears throat> we, you know, we refer to the aranyaka portion of the vedas where you know there are some corrections. And then we give gifts and we send the you know guests back. So like that, uh, uh, there is uh, you know actually this uh, this example refers to the Rig Yajur Sam and Atharva. The Rig Veda is the you know propitiating the devtas. The Yajur Veda contains mantra for yajyas. The Sam Veda is glorification. So when the devtas come, we you know. I sing nice songs for them. And the Yajur, uh, sorry, the Atar Veda is, uh, you know, for all the corrections. We ask, uh, we thank them, and if there's any mistake, or any offenses, we beg forgiveness. So, in that context, that Rig Yajur Veda, this example is there. But ultimately, the Samhita and the Brahmana portion is, you know, how we use it. But uh, that example of, uh, you know, the child going to the Gurukul, then in the Grahastha Ashram, the Vanaprastha Ashram and the Upanishads in the Sanyasa Ashram. The Aranyakas actually also speak about the Yajyas, but they go into the technical aspects of the Yajya, not into the physical aspects of how to perform the Yajya. How this Yajya, you know, the whole science of Yajya is explained. Like, you know, sometimes when we study 4.24 of the Bhagavad Gita, Brahma, Panam, Brahma, Havir, Brahma Agnu, Brahmana Hutam, Brahmena Tena Galtavya, Brahma Karma Samadina. This is the whole technical aspect of what exactly is a sacrifice. So they go into the technical aspects of the sacrifices. It's more like a philosophical aspect of the sacrifices. And higher philosophy on how to get out of this world is given in the Upanishads. So that is how these four divisions are there. Okay. Now up till here, any questions you have? Any questions, any clarifications? Okay, there is one hand which is raised. Dwarka Dish Prabhuji. Dwarka Dish Prabhuji. Um, yes, Dwarka Dish Prabhuji. Guru Harish, I'm going to pronounce. Prabhu, in the chart, uh, this Jainism or Tarvagism or Buddhism coming under Veda. Vedic, Vedic uh, class, how it, even they don't have faith in the Vedas, then how they yes, come in this... They are uh, in the Gnostic category. They are not Aastic, they are Gnostic. Yeah. But still, they are, in the chart, your chart, they are coming under Vedas. They are not coming under the Vedas. They are not coming under the Vedas. Where did I say they are coming in the Vedas? 
the vedic thought darshan are coming in the vedas and in the vedic thoughts they are coming under vedic thoughts yeah. it's a general thought you know because their philosophy is there but they are you know they are called as nastik dharma no faith in the vedas okay they are no faith in the vedas so they derive their philosophies not based on the vedas they are that's their, their own mental speculation they don't even refer to the vedas whereas the other dish, darshans they draw their you know uh, they uh, draw their main source of knowledge from the vedas but they propound that ultimately oh this is the conclusion but the real conclusion the highest conclusion is given by vyasadev in the vedanta that's how we should understand okay devahuti kapi prabhu ji yes uh, hari krishna prabhu so uh, i just want to like in the same slide if you can highlight the difference between sankhya and yoga well as i mentioned uh, i just referred to the shat darshan chart just to bring the point of vedanta that the yes. prasthana traya are within the vedanta this is a elaborate study of you know the difference between sankhya and yoga and all actually sankhya you know uh, brings out the 24 elements and there is the atheistic sankhya kapila who propounded this philosophy but again it doesn't point out to the purusha because the purusha only impregnates the prakriti and the prakriti the 24 elements come so they don't recognize right. it. that's how this the yoga okay. is okay. the connection patanjali is the rishi but again it more uh, you know although it is ishvara paridhana it is mentioned but again it is more tending towards the impersonal conclusion and that's why it doesn't point out the absolute truth uh, shri krishna is the cause of all causes in one sense so that's why you know yoga uh, although it is linking but still it doesn't uh, bring out the highest conclusion and that's why vyasadev uh, he wrote a commentary on the yoga sutras to defeat you know the yoga darshan <laughs> so like that you know you will have to have a very elaborate mm-hmm. study on the shat darshan to understand what are each of these darshans and this class um, is uh, you know not a class where we can discuss into each even briefly each of the darshans because they are quite elaborate but uh, my yeah, point yeah, was yeah. within the vedanta the prasthanatraya come which is our focus here the prasthanatraya <laughs> Okay. Okay. And you just added one more point, right? Like each Veda is for a purpose. Can you just quickly say that once again? I just each each Veda is like like say uh, like other Veda is for corrections and Yajur Veda is for sacrifice. Samita, Samita, Brahmana, Aranyaka, and the Upanishads. I mentioned. Uh, okay please don't type uh, you know it becomes little for me distracting uh, i have to focus on my thought process first and if you have questions please raise your hands don't type your questions in the chat box so what were you saying uh, dev devuti kapil prabhu ji oh yeah you were just uh... calling out like one line for each of the veda the purpose of the vedas right like atharvan is for correction yeah, yeah example, if you can just the example i was giving is you know the rig yajur sam and atharva the rig yeah. veda especially the rig samhita is um, glorification for propitiating the devtas but actually actually these are glorification of the absolute truth but you know at the highest level but uh, for yagya is you know propitiating the devtas glorifying the client the rig veda the yajur vedas you know when the devtas come in then they perform the actual yagyas the mantras for yagyas are there the sam veda you know are songs and you know you entertain your audience you know your guests when you come when they come so devtas you know through the sam veda these praises are sung during the yagyas different you know sam veda mantras are sung and the atar veda deals with you know any corrections you know and each of them has each of their poets so that's how one understanding is that's a different understanding please remember that 
but what example I was giving here for the Brahma, Samhita and uh, uh, Brahmanas and Aranika and Upanishads is different. The children in the Gurukul study the Samhita portion of the Vedas. The Grahastas study the Brahmana portion of the Vedas. And once you are um, you know, Vanaprastha, you study the Aranika portion of the Vedas. And once you are you know, a sannyasi, then you study the Upanishad portion of the Vedas. So that's how gradual progression is there on the spiritual orders. I mentioned that. Okay. I hope it is clear now. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's the basic. It's good enough. Thanks. And if just look, one more, like, where can I read more about the Sad Darshan? Sad Darshan, it's a course in itself. And uh, you'll have like to any start. playlists or lectures like, given on YouTube or. Uh, I'll have to find out. Um, I'll have to find out. There's a book also on Shad Darshan, but it is quite technical and philosophical. Uh, there is a, yeah. one book written by Suvatra Swami Maharaj on Shad Darshan. And there are sometimes courses conducted and um, you can refer that, but I can send in the group the details. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, sure. Thanks. It'll help me a lot. Yes. Uh, one more question. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, then that pronouns. Uh, are you able to hear me? Yes, yes. Yes, Prabhuji, uh, in ISKCON, uh, uh, which are scriptures which are coming under Brahmana portion of the Vedas and Aranyaka portion of the Vedas in ISKCON uh, Sampradaya? Oh, very interesting question. We are not at all qualified, you know, to study the Vedas. <laughs> Absolutely, we don't have any qualifications to study the Vedas at all. We'll come to that. You know, in the next slides, it will come out. <laughs> Hold on. Okay. Okay. So, I hope this is clear now. This chart is also clear. It will come up. <laughs> After Sri Lila, Vyas Dev divided the Vedas into four books, Rig, Yajur, Sam and Atharva. His disciples further divided them into 1130 divisions. This is stated in the Urma Puran, 52 19.2. So you know that the Vyas Dev divided the Vedas into four. The one he made into four. And he gave it to each of his disciples. And they made further divisions into how much? 1130. Previously, the Rig Veda was divided into 21 sections. The Yajur Veda into 100 sections, the Sam Veda into 1000 sections, and the Atar Veda into 9 divisions. Each division has four minor divisions, namely Samhitas, Brahmanas, Aranika, and Upanishads. Just now we studied na, that there are these four divisions Samhita, Brahmana, Aranika. So 21, 21 divisions, and all these 21 have what? Samhita, Brahmana, and Aranika, and Upanishads. Just to give an example, for our understanding, again, you know, we have the Bhakti Rasamra Sindhu and for Bhakti Shastri, we study only the Eastern Division, first 19 chapters. But there is a Southern Division, there is a Western Division, the Northern Division. So it's something like that. The Samhita, the Brahmana, Aranyaka, and the Pusha. There are these four divisions in each of these sections. Thus, altogether, there are the four Vedas contains 1,130 Samhitas, 1,130 Brahmanas, 1,130 Aranyakas and 1,130 Upanishads. This makes a total of 4,520 divisions. At present, most of these texts have disappeared due to the influence of time. We can only find 11 Samhitas, 18 Brahmanas, 7 Aranyakas and 220 Upanishads, which constitute a mere 6% of the entire Vedic Panam. So, out of 4, 520, we have only what is left is this much, and this is just 6%. So, now I have presented here in the chart, you can get a clear understanding. So, Srila Vyas Dev gave Rig Veda to Pailarishi, who made 21 divisions. So, there are 21 Samhitas, 21 Brahmanas, 21 Aranikas, 21 Upanishads. Yajur Veda to Vaishampayan, 100 and 100 divisions. Sam Veda to Jamini, 1000. And Atar Veda to Sumantamuni, Angira, 9. So, 9 Samhitas, 9 Brahmanas, 9 Aranthas, and 9 Pranishas. So, total 4, 5, 
and zero divisions. Now, which are available in ISKCON? We will come to that very soon. <laughs> now, what is Upanishads? We are going to study Sri Upanishads. So, what is Upanishads? We have to know. The meaning of the word Upanishads is as follows. Those scripture which help the practitioner achieve liberation and bring the person close to the Lord are called Upanishad. Upa means near and Nisidati means bring. Or the word may be divided as Upa meaning near with Ni meaning certainly, Nishchaya and Sad means to loosen, destroy or attain. That knowledge which loosens bondage with certainty destroys the ignorance covering the Jiva Sarup and brings one closer to the Lord is called Upanishads. So this is the definition of Upanishads. Upanishads is called Brahma Vidya and Rahasya Vidya, secret knowledge imparted by the Guru to his disciple who realizes it in his heart. So this is called as Brahma Vidya. And we sing that um, every time after the Gita one chapter <coughs> Supanishadzu Brahma Vidyaye Yoga Shastri Shri Krishna Arjuna Shri Krishna Arjuna Samvade Pratamodhyaya like that. No? So Brahma Vidya. This is Brahma Vidya. There are many Upanishads. The Muktiko Upanishad lists 108 names of which the first 10 are Isha, Kena, Kata, Prashna, Munda, Manduka, Pitriya, Aitriyam, Chandogyam, Brahad Aranyaka, Tata. Along with the Shweta Shar Upanishads, this makes 11. So among the 108, the 11 are most important. And among the 11, Ish Upanishads is the first. And that's why Prabhupada only commented on Ish Upanishads. Shankara wrote commentaries on them. He wrote commentaries on all the 11 Upanishads. Some claim not write the commentary on Shweta Shara since it contains many. But this argument quotes the Shweta Shara Upanishads many times in his commentary on Vedan Sutra. So Shankara did write commentary on all the 11. As I mentioned, you know, any theological school has to uh, comment on the Shruti Prasan category, the Spriti Prasan category, and the Nyay Prasan. So Shankara wrote his Sharedika Bhasha, Vedan Sutta commentary. He wrote his uh, you know, commentary on the Gita, and then he wrote commentaries on the 11 principal Upanishads. Sri Ramanchari did not write any commentaries on the Upanishads himself, but his follower Ranga Ramanuja wrote commentaries on them, except Ish Upanishads. Shri Madhvacharya wrote commentaries on the 11 Upanishads. Madhvacharya also wrote a Gita commentary and also a Vedan Sutra commentary. Nyaya Prasthan. Baldev apparently wrote commentaries to 10 Upanishads, but unfortunately, except for Ish Upanishad commentary, none can be found at present. So, in the Avar Sampradaya, Baldev Vidya Bhushan wrote commentaries to all the 10 Upanishads, but none are available except Ish. And we will be referring a uh, few of the points from Baldev Vidya's commentary which are helpful in understanding Prabhupada's commentary. We will stick to Prabhupada's commentary, but some of the important points we will be taking from Baldev Vidya commentary in our study. Ish Upanishad takes its name from the first word of its first verse, Isha. It is the last chapter of the Shukla Yajur Veda containing 40 chapters. So it is the last part. I told you Upanishads comes in the end. So it comes in the part of the Vajasneya Samhita. Because it is contained within the Vajasneya Samhita section, it is called as the Vajasneya Samhita Upanishad. Its 18 mantras describe the Paramatma, the Jiva and the Jiva's goal. <clears throat> Samanda Bide Prayajan is all dead there. What is the sum and substance of the Shruti, including the Upanishads, Spriti, and the Nyaya Prasthans? What is the sum and substance? What is the essence of Shruti, Spriti, and Nyaya? Vyas, after writing all the scriptures for the benefit of the Jivas, wrote the Bhagavatam to explain the meaning of Vedanta Sutra, Mahabharata, Gayatri Mantra, and the Vedas. 
it is worshipped as the crown jewel of all scriptures. It is Chakravarti Samrat. Bhagavatam contains the essence of Shruti, Smriti and Nyaya Prasthans. So, in ISKCON, what is available for us is Srimad Bhagavatam, which is the essence of Shruti, Smriti and Nyaya Prasthans. Thus, we can understand the meaning of the scriptures through the conclusions of the Bhagavatam. Thus, the meaning of the Upanishads should not contradict the conclusions of the Bhagavatam. So, for us, by studying Bhagavatam, we get the essence of the Shruti, Smriti and Nyaya Prasthans. So, that is what is available for us in this form. So, we have been given the essence. We have been given the essence. Now, I am giving you two quotations. How Srimad Bhagavatam is the essence of Shruti, Smriti and Nyaya. This is one verse. One, two, three. So here, Yaswanubhavam, one who himself experienced it. I surrendered to the son of Yas, Tam Vyasanupayami. The incomparable Guru of all sages, Guru Muni Nam, who mercifully spoke Karunaya, the Purana full of hidden meanings, Purana Guyam. You know, he spoke the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is what? For all the people of the world, even in the future, Samsarinam, who spoke the Bhagavatam, which is revealed as the excellent of Rasa of Sajadev, Yaswanu Bhavan. It is the realization, he realized himself. This translation is of Vishwanath Chakrathakur, please remember that. And which is the revealer of Atma, Adhyatma Deepam, for those desiring to cross Ati Tudarashram, dense ignorance, Tamo Andam, with ease, Ati. So here I want to point out Akila Shuti Saram. It is the essence of the Shuti. The Srimad Bhagavatam is the essence of Shuti. And the Srimad Bhagavatam is coming in the technical category of which? Shuti Sastra, Smriti Sastra, or Nyaya Sastra? Who will answer this? Srimad Bhagavatam comes in which category? The Shruti Prasthan or the Smriti Prasthan or the Nyaya Prasthan? One hand has been raised. Yes, Dwarkadish Ruji. Yes. It is Smriti because written by uh, Yasadeva. So it is which category? Smriti. Smriti category, yes. It is yes. technically in the Smriti category. It is in the Smriti category. But it is the essence of Shruti, Smriti, as well as Naya. As well as Naya. So, Akhila Shruti Saramekam. It is Akhila Shruti and it is a Purana Guiyam. It is, it is not just a Sattvic Puran, but it is Amala Puran, as Mahaprabhu says. And then, Sarva Vedanta Saramhi. Shri Bhagavatam Vishyate Tadrasamrata Triptasya Dhanyat Swad Rati Kvachet Srimad Bhagavatam is declared Vishyate to be the essence of all Vedanta philosophy. Sarva Vedanta Saramhi. So how Bhagavatam is also Nyaya Prasthan is being you know, very clearly brought out here. Who, one who has felt satisfaction, Truptasya, from its sweet rasa, tad rasamritasya, will never be attracted to any other literature. Nanyat, rati, swad, rati, vachet. So, Srimad Bhagavatam comes in which category? Now, <laughs> which category is Srimad Bhagavatam? Which category is Srimad Bhagavatam? Mahesh Babuji. Which category is Bhagavatam? I, uh, I couldn't get your question, Kavadi. Which category? Srimad Bhagavatam, you know, whether it belongs to Shruti, Smriti or Nai category. Uh, according to the flow, what, what, what has been going through in the previous slides, it comes in Nyaya Prasthana. Yeah, but uh, previous shlokas dis discuss that as Smriti. But then also, essence of all the Shruti, Smriti and Nyaya. Yes. So, Srimad Bhagavatam technically comes in the Smriti category, but it is the essence of Shruti, Smriti and Nyaya. 
Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay, now my question to you all after understanding so much about Prasthanatraya. I will ask our Bhakti Shastri students. Bhagavad Gita comes under technically which category? Yeah. I hope you have heard my question. So I'll ask Mohan Rupsham Prabhuji. Bhagavad Gita comes under which category technically? I think. Pardon? Hare Krishna. Yes. Little confusion, Prabhu. Just Smriti category, technically, <laughs> because it, <laughs> written by, uh, spoken by Lord himself, but written by Vyasadev. Written by Vyasadev, yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. It is technically coming under the Sruti Prasthan because we saw that. We saw that, you know, the. Uh, I'll show you the slide. I know devotees get confused. Yeah. The Itihasas, Puranas, and the Pancharatras. It is a Pancharatra, sorry. Pancharatra. So, Mahabharata is a Puran. So, technically, it comes in the Spriti category. But, <laughs> what is Bhagavad Gita then? What is Bhagavad Gita? It technically comes under the Shruti category, but Bhagavad Gita. Oh, yes. Sri Valli Mataji. Sri Valli Mataji. Yeah, it's a long list. Okay. Yes. Hare Krishna. Uh, technically, it comes under uh, Smriti because it's a part of Mahabharata. But because it's Gita Upanishad and speaking by the Lord and it's eternal, it also comes under the Shruti category. Okay. Anything more? That's all I have to <laughs> You're correct. Bhagavad Gita is also the essence of Shruti, Smriti and Nyaya. <laughs> It technically comes under the Shruti, but it is a Shruti within the Smriti. It is a Shruti within the Smriti because it was directly spoken by the Lord on the battlefield of Kurukshetra. Ya Swayam Padmanabha Mukasya. You know, in the Gita Mahatma, it is said, na? Shankaracharya is saying, glorified. It was directly spoken by Padmanabha. So it is a Shruti, you know, spoken directly from the by the Lord. So it is a Shruti within the Smriti. And, you know, in essence, the Vedanta philosophy is also there in the Bhagavad Gita. There is a three shloki Gita, which is the essence of Vedanta there. 15 point, uh, 15, 16, 17 and 18 verses. Uh, that is, you know, you know, like essence of Vedanta. So, Nyaya Prasthan is also true, logic also, you know, the absolute truth has been established there. So, it is also Bhagavad Gita as well, the essence of Shruti, Smriti and Nyaya. Shruti, Smriti and... Prabhu, what we can understand is that wherever logic has been used to explain the absolute truth or the knowledge of the Vedas comes under Nyaya Prasthana. No, 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 no that, that's not how we understand Nyaya Prasthana. Nyaya Prasthana, that's why you have to be very careful. Nyaya is logic. Nyaya is logic, but Nyaya Prasthana is different. Nyaya Prasthana is work involving logic to find the meaning of the Upanishads. So there is a different kind of logic applied to find the meaning of the Upanishads in, you know, in the Vedan Sutra. But there is logic also which we use from the Nyaya Darshan. That is different. That is Nyaya, Nyaya Darshan. We use logic in general sense also to understand things. You know, but Nyaya Prasthan is different. It's a work involving logic to find the meaning of the Upanishads, and it's an altogether different uh, field in itself, which I myself have not studied and I cannot comment much about it. But first thing and foremost, you have to clearly understand that this Nyaya Prasthan is different from that Nyaya Darshan. Nyaya Darshan is basically logic. 
how to logically deduce and understand things, knowledge, how to get knowledge. You know, there is a methodology which, you know, the Nyaya Sutras discuss, which is helpful, but Nyaya Prasthan is different. It is the work involving logic to find the meaning of the Upanishads, to harmonize the statements of the Upanishads and ultimately, you know, understand the absolute truth. There is a difference between the two. Okay. Two questions. All, all philosophers are here today. Yes, Sapnil Prabhuji. Uh, Hare Krishna Prabhu. Uh, why these uh, categories are called as prasthan and not prakar? Prasthan and not? Uh, like why they are not called as prakar? Why prakar. they are called as prasthan? Prasthan, thaan, prasthan, prasthan means pillars or sources of knowledge. So the Sanskrit root words, I don't know, I have not studied, but uh, Prabhupada discusses quite elaborately in the Chaitanya Charitamrit purpose. So there are only three sources of knowledge. And, you know, uh, you know, sometimes in Hindi we use this terminology, you know, yaha se prasthan karenge na to aap jayenge, you know. So these are the only sources through which, you know, you can reach the absolute truth. Shruti, Spriti, Nyaya, Prasthan. So these are the, in, in our response, we study Bhagavad Gita and Bhagavatam through which we will reach the absolute truth. <clears throat> we need not study, you know, anyone wants to study 1140 Upanishads or 108 or 10 Upanishads. <laughs> Each Upanishads only when we start, we'll understand, you know, how difficult it is. And remember, Upanishads are when you have retired completely from material life. You have to be a sannyasi. And that's why many devotees after 10, 15 years, 20 years in his confined Bhagavad Gita still difficult. <laughs> because Upanishads are meant for sannyasis <laughs> to get out of this material world. And the Lord out of his mercy and compassion has given us only this one Gita Upanishads, which covers the entire essence of all the Upanishads. And that also you know, we find it very difficult to study in Kali Yuga. So we should fix to that. So the prasthan means these are the ways or the sources of knowledge by which we can understand the absolute truth. Is it okay? Oh, okay, bro. Thank you. Yes, uh, Sri Manil Mataji had a question. One second. Okay. Yes, Mataji. Sorry to, to bother again. I'm not uh, able to understand the difference between Nyaya Prasthana and uh, Nyaya because according to what we saw, uh, Nyaya also comes in Astikadas, right? So whatever is being talked about no, in Nyaya no, Shaddarshan no, 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 is no, also no. in the Vedic canon, right? No, Nyaya doesn't come within the Shaddarshans. Nyaya Prasthana doesn't come within the Shaddarshans. Please remember that first thing. <clears throat> Again, I'll come back to, you know, see, there is a Vedanta. Within the Vedanta, there is Prasthanatraya. Within the Vedanta, Prasthanatraya in Vedanta. There is Suti Prasthana, where you are establishing the conclusion of the Vedas. You know, you can write commentary on Ish Upanishads, you know, uh, uh, concluding that the absolute truth is impersonal. But you know, concluding the, the darshan of Vyas <clears throat> with that conclusion. That's why these prasantra are within the Vedanta. And even the Smriti prasan is within the Vedanta. The Nyay prasan is within the <clears throat> Vedanta Sutra. Whereas the Nyay darshan is here. It's a darshan. Nyay is a darshan. And within the prasantra come within the Vedanta here. That is the difference, first thing. And secondly, this Nyay is, you know, rules of logic. It basically speaks about rules of logic to understand knowledge. And here also there is logic used, but it is altogether a different, you know, to understand the meaning of the Upanishads here. That's it. Of course, we will be, you know, those who know Nyaya Sutras will, you know, definitely understand how, you know, we have to understand the meaning of Upanishads, but it is a prasthan. It is Nyaya is a prasthan. That is, you know, for us, it should be clear for us. 
it is a nyaya prasthan it is is it clear now mother ji yeah. okay any other questions anyone has dwarka dish prabhu ji yes um, yes you are there in the first second batch no i no ji no no i joined only bhagavad gita oh that's why right. okay Yes, I need to finish the other ones after this. Okay. Tell me. Rupaji, actually, in Vaishnava's, uh, Vaishnava's project, Srimad Bhagavatam minus Ultimate. Yes. Ultimate. Yes, it's, it's, a, it's a tarim of essence of everything. Same way, the, the Mayavadi school or Adhoida school, their project, something else. They don't actually accept Srimad Bhagavatam. So yes. how, is this, how is this difference happening, actually? that's because that within the you know within the you know vedanta there is extremes there are two extremes we saw advait and vait which establish you know that uh, the jiva and the lord are one that is one extreme and the other extreme is you know madhvacharya the jiva and the lord are completely different so you know when you are far away from the lord also that is suffering <clears throat> and you you know you are new when you equate them to one also, you know, being in Brahma Jyoti is also a kind of suffering in one sense. Yeah. <laughs> Although you are free from the growth and subtle bodies. Because ultimately the soul cannot relish rasa. So Achintya Veda Ved is in between. Simultaneous oneness and difference which allows intimate reciprocations. So, uh, uh, that's why there are, you know, there are variations within this. And each school of thought uh, have their different flavors and ultimately the highest thing for us is what Mahaprabhu has given. So there are, you know, each school of thought, although they, uh, you know, uh, accept certain, there are certain tenets which are, you know, common, but there is difference because they are different schools of thought. The, the Sri Sampradaya and the Vishnu Swami Sampradaya, the Kumar Sampradaya and the Rudra Sampradaya. And uh, Nimbar Sampradaya. So there is difference in that, and that is again a different topic altogether. There is difference, definitely. But they all you know conclude that Vishnu is supreme and the Jiva is a servant of Vishnu. There are certain common things in all of them, also. And their practices are also a little different. And the goals also what they lead to are, you know, like you can go to Vaikuntha, but only by practicing uh, Mahaprabhu's philosophy. We can attain Braj Bhakti. So, like that, their goals also different. Is it clear? So, so, Sampradayas accept Srimad Bhagavatam as, as a ultimate authority. Yeah. Yes, the, all the four Sampradayas accept it. All the four Sampradayas accept it. And their approach, you know, their sacred scriptures might be different and their approach might be a little different. But, uh, you know, our approach is, you know, through Rasa, which has been given by Rupa Goswami. Yes. Uh, by which you can attain Braj Bhakti. And that will not be accessible to him because they are seen through that lens, through that darshan lens, whether it is the, you know, the, you know, if you see more emphasis in the Sri Sampradaya is given to Ramayana. <laughs> yeah. There's more reference and emphasis given to Ramayana there. And uh, they give more emphasis to Ma Naharan Upanishads. Because it speaks about the glory of Narayan. Because, you know, their ob object of worship is Narayan. Correct, correct, correct. And for us, uh, Gopal Tapani Upanishad is more sacred because it speaks about Lord Gopal in Goloka. Yes. So like that, every Sampradaya will have its own sacred text within the body, within the whole body, which is, uh, you know, unique to their Sampradaya. But there are some common tenets, but there are also little philosophical differences, which we cannot go into now, which is a separate study about all the four sampradaya, the philosophical so, differences between them. So in short, no need to condemn them. But all four fall within the Vedanta. They fall within the Vedanta, and within the Vedanta, the prasthantre come into picture. So we need no need to condemn the Advaita system or any other system, yeah? Pardon? We, don't, we should not condemn. We should not, uh, you know, see lower than us, uh, other ours, something like that, or other 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 systems. Other sampradayas, no, we should not. 
anyone any you know anyone has who has come in contact with the bonaparte sampradaya you know he is inspired by that so he should you know there can be differences in siddhanta but you know we should respect them provided yes. it is a bonaparte sampradaya that's important chandramabhu chandramabhu says keep away from mayavadis no mayavadis yes definitely the mayavadis they come under they come under duvida yeah they come under yeah advaita is that's why one other extreme it is and advaita although within it falls within the uh, uh within the vedanta but it is you know it is taking the conclusion to one extreme <laughs> complete other extreme it is taking so you know and that's why you know we don't uh, you know uh, subscribe to it and we don't hear that also but how do you say prabhu daida is an other extreme pardon how do you say dwaita also an extreme dwait is also extreme because you know uh, madhvacharya's sign is this too <laughs> the jiva is completely different from vishnu you know so yeah. it causes a lot of separateness from the lord and you know the devotee so there is no intimacy and there is no you know it's a kind of suffering in one sense so okay. that's why you know dwait is also in one sense you know you know there is a experience of gop kumar when he went to vaikuntha he saw narayan and he started running towards narayan to hug narayan and all the vaikuntha was saying what is he doing you know and he came and collapsed before narayan and narayan could understand his mood and then everyone was uh, glorifying narayan and doing the chamar and they were singing the standard mantras there is lot of awe and reference you know the lord is master prabhu i am his servant i have to be far away so there is no intimacy and that was like a suffering for gop kumar there correct yeah okay. so that's why he could not stay there more and that's why he went up up until he reached gokul and then golok and then he found satisfaction that's also kind of suffering so there are two different extremes and mayavad yes definitely we don't uh, you know we don't entertain because you know it uh, it makes the lord and the jiva one mm. and th- th- then there is no question of bhakti so that's why that's dangerous and that's why mahaprabhu told us you know mayavad bhasha sunila oila sarvan we have to be careful about it definitely okay thanks for the beautiful beautiful explanation any other clarifications anyone has okay so it's sharp 5 o'clock uh, now next class we begin now after uh, you know this four books and what is the introduction to the vedas we will this is one uh, last verse i will take <clears throat> how does the shrimad bhagavatam teach veda puranam kavyam cha prabhur mitram priye eva cha bodayanti iti hi prabhu trivid bhagavatam puna The learned say that bodhiyanti ti ti prabhu Veda instructs like master injunctions. I mentioned na shuti are like injunctions. They just give injunctions. A purana instructs like a friend. So the mother says, child, don't steal. That's it. No stealing. Why? How? You know. But the sister or the brother will tell a story and how you know he stole and then he got sinful reactions. He was caught and so the puranas instruct like a friend. and poetry instructs like a lover veda purana kavyam cha prabhu mitra priya eva cha but shrimad bhagavatam instructs like all three of them trivid bhagavatam puna so that's why shrimad bhagavatam is the essence of shruti smriti and nyaya also and that's why it's this is jeev goswami quoting in the tatva sandarbha so here we complete the introduction to vedas so tomorrow we will begin with the introduction to the teachings of the vedas that is shila prabhupada's lecture which is there in the ishupanishads so tomorrow we will go through that it will take one or two classes and then we will go to the invocation mantra mantra one like that okay so we will stop here shri ishupanishads ki jai shila prabhupada ki jai hari krishna